Hey everybody, Thomas here, and today I'm with Mr. Robert, and he's going to show us undoing a blade here, as long as the chickens and dog get out of the way. <laughs> that one didn't do it. Sometimes it happens. So there's a couple ways to do it. If you don't have gloves on, it's not a bad idea just to throw it out there. <laughs> Third time's a charm. It does happen to me too. There you go. You're going to do this one by hand. <laughs> All right, so one of the things we want to talk about is uh, sharpening blades. Now, we did a video on this way back in the past. We're going to go over in Mr. Robert's new shop in there. If you're here for the Sawmill Show, that was literally the christening of the shop. He hadn't had it uh, open that long. It's raining outside, but, uh, you know, bear with us as we get through this. First things first, what he does is he throws this on his um, cleaning device, if you will. So this wheel right... Upgrading. Wait, yeah, upgraded because beforehand he was only running one of the uh, the steel cleaners there. Now he's got a dual one on there, so he'll show us how it works. Go ahead. So he just turns it on. He's got a little groove there. He slides it in. And this is literally, and you can see that rust just coming off. This is one way he cleans a blade. This gets rid of any uh, burrs, anything hanging on there, the rust. He also will soak the blades just for a short period in vinegar to help break that rust off. And while he's cleaning, we're going to show you something new that he, uh, while he's uh, sharpening, excuse me, we'll show you something new that he added to his sharpener that will in fact make these blades rust prevented. We'll say there's rust prevention added to them. So it's pretty neat. So again, he does one side and then he'll invert the blade. There you go. He just flips it around. Now, there was a question the other day. Hey, my blade was cutting in the wrong direction. What happened? You just invert the blade. Literally, you bend it in and on itself. And again, takes off both sides and just cleans all that rust off there to try to get the blade cleaned up. Uh, and also, that helps to get the, the, the teeth ready for sharpening. Um, if you had like little particles of rust and debris and stuff on there, that could throw off your uh, your gauges on your dial indicators on your setter. So this is one way to make sure that we know what the blade's condition is. And also it makes it easier to see if there's any cracks or any kind of imperfections in the blade. And again, he's gonna invert this blade again. Let's we'll see if we can show this a little bit closer. And he just whips it in, there you go. All right, so now we're gonna head into the shop and show the rest of this. All right, so we're here inside of Robert's shop, and as you can see, these are orders that are complete that are waiting for pickup by customers. This shop right here was, all the wood was cut by yours truly. Of course, I did it for my buddy, Mr. Robert, and everything. So the hardwood floors here, this is water oak and live oak. There's some live oak pieces there, kind of like the brownish color and the water oak. And of course, all this beautiful pine uh, wall and everything. He did a really cool thing with the metal around. But on his uh, setter right here, uh, he's, he's placing the blade in there. He's gonna go over this. But one of the things I wanna talk about, now if you're here at the show, he may have talked about this too. He buys these zip ties, if you will. And for every 100 blades, that's one of these bags. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight bags there. And, that, here, and here's one with only five left there. Okay. So, you know, assuming there might be a little bit lost, the man since February has almost sharpened 900 blades. So that's not bad for pretty much a one man gig. Now his son does come out here and helps him from time to time when he gets a large, large order, but it's really impressive how many blades Mr. Robert has sharpened since February. That's almost 900 blades. I'm gonna tell you, I get blades in here from every manufacturer that makes a saw blade. And I'm gonna just tell you, so all that weird double hardened A A forty seven and all that. In my opinion, they can throw that in the river. <laughs> it just it would even make a good fish bank or nothing. Um, what but, is what is your blade of choice? My blade of choice is just a just a common standard blade like this one right here. This is a. a this is, yeah, this is a Timber King Ultramax, but he's yes. also a really big fan of the Meisenheimer blades, My, yeah, Meisenheimer. which I believe they're Nicholson stock or something to that effect. Yeah, Nick, uh, Meisenheimer out of Marstown, Tennessee, makes a very good blade. 
uh, Cooks Ripper, uh, Ripper blades are good blades. I have several customers that swear by the rippers. I guess what I really need to tell you is if you got a blade that cuts really good for you, no matter what it is, you stick with that blade. That's exactly right. And for me, these Timber King Ultramaxes, they've worked really well. Uh, I have run Cooks in the past before, but I do like these blades. They seem to run well. Uh, my buddy, Mr. Jack, he likes to run Cooks blades on his mill. So it's kind of all over the place. It's personal preference. On the sharpening aspect, if you get a blade that's double hardened out here on the teeth, if you sharpen, if you set your angles too high up on the tip of the tooth, you will snap it off. Yes, and we saw that just the other day when we had some, uh, actually a subscriber on my channel out here, we saw that we were trying to set a blade and it was one of these super duper hardened ones or anything and it was like every other tooth was wanting to snap. So you have to, you have to drop down, you never push on the tip, you have to drop down in here toward the gullet a little bit. Yes. And then you can do very well in setting the teeth. I set the 20,000 so unless the customer asks for something different. I sharpen to 8 degrees unless the customer asks for something different. And from time to time, I will ask for a six degree blade if we're cutting some really hard stuff. And now a six degree blade will run a little bit slower. And I am working on putting a, a, together a video that shows the difference, but really there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, six degrees, those are the ones that I say for the really, really wide, say black walnut oak, something that's gonna put a lot of pressure on a blade, but I wanna take small little cuts at a time. All right, so. Uh, and for you folks that don't live down here in South Mississippi that's watching this video, the most important thing in this shop is this baby right here. <laughs> Which is, this is a new addition, because for the past however many years, you've never had that never had in your sharpening finish. shop. <laughs> I built this little room. It's uh, 13 by 20 by 9 foot tall. I wish I'd have built it 10 foot tall. <laughs> 9 works, 10 would have been better. And I have 6 to 8 inches of sprayed in foam insulation in all the walls and 8 inches in the ceiling and my floors insulated. So that was sprayed by um, Mr. Howell, Lewis, Lewis Howell. Howell, here from Southern Comfort Spray Foam down in Loosedale, Mississippi. You can see it coming out up here. Right yeah, he, he did a fantastic job and everything, but we have insulated this room. Again, it's like five to six inches of spray foam in here, and this room can turn into icebox if you're here for the Samuel Show, June 12th. A lot of people hung out in here. This this is where this this lucky guy here hung out while I'm out there sweating it out there. I am so thankful there were lots of setting questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got to stay in here. So, so I, I mechanic on this stool all day. Put a rear end in that. Put a rear end in the stool here all day. <laughs> all right, so he's gonna go over some setting information here because I'm trying to learn. I have a Cook's cat claw sharpener setter as well as a Timber King sharpener and setter. But setting is one of the things I am not good at. And I have to do a video that I'm going to watch myself to get better at. All right, we cleaned the blade out there. Y'all watch this clean the blade. I brought it in here and I adjusted my rollers to suit my, the length of my blade. And I have blades anywhere from 39 inches, 139 inches to 229 inches. Mm -hmm. So they're all, I'm constantly changing the set. So I butt it in here, and the first thing I do, I usually take a take a little bit of WD and I lubricate my dial indicator to make sure they're working yeah. proper. And that's one thing he really likes about this, the fact that you can see real time indication of what your set is. And that tells you, because you may have a tooth in there that's way off, way under or way over. And it's gonna leave that exactly. scratch it'll, it'll, mark on That's exactly lower. right. So I bring my blade up. So he's bringing to where the dial indicators are on the flat portion of the flat blade, portion of the in blade. the gullet, lower portion of the gullet. So we're having to move, I had to move that two thousandths of an inch. And what he did is he just zeroed these. So he zeroed his dial indicator so he knows what he's working from. Okay, so we got him zeroed. So we're gonna drop this back down. And how high do you like to have the blade? This is a, this is a Cook's instrument. And I will tell you that Cook tells you to have the gullet of the blade Right, right here, flush with the top of this block. Okay. And the top of this block in here. Okay. I now, however, if you can, you get in here, Thomas. If you come in here and you look, these these are your anvils. This yes. this one pushes this way. This one pushes that way. 
So you want to make sure that that anvil is a sixteenth or so below the tip of that tooth. Okay. If you don't, you're gonna risk breaking it, risk or, break, or yes, chipping risk, it off. Risk snapping those teeth off. And I'm, we may do that here. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at it. So we have zeroed our dial indicator. Okay. I'm gonna put this right here. I'll bring this up. And now I'm gonna turn my anvils in to where they're touching the tooth. Okay. Not pushing, but just touching. Okay. All right, and right and, now. And that shows you what the current set is. So this is 17,000. 17,000, and that one's 12. Yeah, that's, that's pretty far off. So what I'm gonna do is advance this without adjusting, pushing on these anvils any. I'm gonna advance this a couple of times. So we're 19,000 and we're back to 11 there. Okay. So I know that was 15 and 11, 15 and 11, 16 and 11. So I know that I need to tighten up on this right here. And I need to tighten up a little bit over here. Okay, so I, you just brought the anvils in. I brought the anvils in. So we're up to about 18 here and we're about 14 here. So I need to go a little more here. If you go a little bit at the time, you won't over extend your, overset your teeth. Yep. That's it, real easy to do. Whenever you get down to where it's close, just a very minute adjustment on this will move that thing several thousands. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sweep into the inside here so I can give the, the viewers a little bit closer look. All right, so now we have this one here set on 20 okay. and this one here on 18. So we're gonna just tweak that a little bit. Still about 18, 21. So I'm gonna slack off here just a touch and I'm gonna tweak here just a little bit. Now, every blade that you do, you will have to set the setter up. You cannot just set it and forget it. This is not a turkey cooker. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I went down to Cook's, so we're set right on 20 and 20. Okay. 21 and 20. So I count. That's one, two, that's a little off. Three, we need to tighten this up a little bit. We're going to start that over. We're going to start that count over. And that blade would see I am in a thin part of this blade. People will tell you that, that blade is the same thickness all the way around. That blade is not the same thickness. That's all exactly the way right. Around. So it will change and then it, it will change thickness. And then when you get to where the blade was welded together, and I cut Yeah, you're about to say you cut yourself. I cut myself. <laughs> and, and that's an everyday thing. Yeah, so everything on here is sharp. The blade is actually decently sharp too. Um but I think I was cutting some oak with this. But, but down there, they tell you to take this little wrench right here. And he's... They'll tell you to take this little wrench and then tighten this up. That's on your anvil. Mm -hmm. Which I never, never tighten that thing up. Because I'm He goes hand tight, that's it. I can do finger tight, as yeah. tight as I can get it with my finger. Because he'll, he's constantly adjusting this to make sure he's getting the most accurate set that he can. We gotta back this up, so that's what happened. See, we're right at 20, 21, that's one. Gonna... I think you said you're, uh, you didn't. Back... I, did, I didn't have them tight while yeah, I got them. Okay. I got ahead myself. Yep. One, two. Okay, they're all hitting pretty three. good. And that's why I don't tighten these down, because if I, if I come over two thousandths, I'll adjust that and make it come back in. Cook says set within, if you're within four thousandths, that's good enough. Just rock and roll with this thing because mm -hmm. this thing's made for speed, not accuracy. I, I like my customers and I like doing this work. If I give, if I send out bad blades, it won't be long. I won't have any customers. <laughs> so I try to stay within two to three thousandths. And he's pretty dang accurate at that, as you can see right now. I'm watching via my, my screen here, but it's it's they're looking pretty dang close. See, I'll go around this thing till I get it consistent. And see, that one was too far, so I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. Yeah, so take a look at that tool he has in his hand there. This is essentially just a bolt that he did, a, he cut a little slot in, and he uses that to bring uh, the uh, the teeth back or in if, they, if they're not far enough or out too far. That's that, a very important tool to have. That's a Robert Westfall engineered tool. <laughs> it's uh, not patented. So if you want to make one, knock yourself out. Let's 
takes me just a few minutes to get this thing set, but once I get it set where I want it. Yeah, it's pretty close. Two, three, four. That's the spot five. on. All right, now that, that was five teeth that I had on 20 thousandths. So I know that from right there to right there, that's five teeth going that way. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's, that's the fifth tooth. Right past the edge of this, that's your fifth tooth. You can so, always count on that. So the fifth tooth, meaning that's, that's a fifth set of three. So that's a 15th tooth from here. So that, yeah. That's right. In other words, that's the fifth tooth set. I call that my left. I call this my right. Correct. So that's my fifth tooth set to the left side. Even though I set one left, one right, one straight, I call that my fifth tooth from right here. Yep. Going in the left hand direction. Yeah, so he knows he has that section set right there. He's going to set until it comes back around to that um, white out mark there. That's right. They're shooting pretty good. And again, he every single blade is unique. No blade, you, you can't just throw multiples up here and want to do that. So again, he's, he's correcting a tooth right there. I mean, this is the level of effort he puts into this. This is far more than I think you're going to get from uh, some of the, the, the mass manufacturers who, who do this on a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these blades a day. He, he individualized, individually goes through every blade and does this. So I, I'm impressed and I am very satisfied with the level of effort and the way these blades cut when he's done. Now these blades right here, I, the only thing I wish I had a way to determine how many times I've had a blade sharpen. I guess if I kept track of certain blades or anything, some had, had a way to mark them or something like that, but really I just run a blade till it goes, which could be five sharpenings, could be four sharpenings, could be six sharpenings. I, I really don't know. And you'll see, we're going to show a blade here in a second. We really make sure we get a full sweep of the gullet to ensure that we deadhead any cracks that may form. After you run a blade many, many times, you'll start to see a crack forming at the lower portion of the gullet uh, where that stress is, right on the face of that tooth. If you draw a line straight down everything, that's where you're gonna see the highest stress on your blade because essentially, you know, that, that's the pivot point of that tooth and everything, and that's where a crack will form. And if you properly set your teeth you know, not any one tooth is going to be taking more load than another. And then when you sharpen your teeth, as long as you sweep that gullet and everything, you'll help to grind out any crater cracks or cracks that are forming there in the gullet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop shooting for here because then you can actually, we're almost back around. So I'll just keep shooting until it just shows you. So probably about three, four minutes. It don't take long. Yeah. You can see the white out, mark, white out mark is coming back around. And there's a couple teeth in there, so I may have hit something with this blade or who knows what. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and switch over to the sharpener. So I'm going to hop out here and I'll start shooting again. Correction, Robert wanted to say something. <laughs> whenever, whenever I finish sharpening the blade, I always back off the yes. hold out on my anvils and I back them up six half turns now whenever i put the next blade on there none of these these animals will not be touching the blade anywhere yeah so whenever i zero my blade mm -hmm. you don't run I, a risk i, of... I won't have any deflection at, at this point okay that's good that's a good thing always go back to something where, where it's not touching so you're not influencing your diet start over on every blade start from zero on every blade mm -hmm. if you want to get a true set blade Exactly. Because all these, you never know when you run into a, a dog on your sawmill or a piece of concrete in a limb, or and trust me, that does happen, and uh, or, or hit something. And I have got blades in here where all the teeth are leaning that way really hard. Oh, yeah. It's just, we saw one the other day. It looked like it was 45 degrees one direction, every single tip. Yep. Let me hop out here. Now he's going to go over to the sharpener. Now, what I was talking about earlier in the video. Mr. Ingenuity here. We did see this on Searching for Sawmills, episode number one, The Green Machine of Green County. 
There was like this blade lubrication system. It's very high tech. It's on the sawmill. It's on the sawmill. Now, he is thinking head. He's went ahead, got a PVC end cap, like a, this is a, what, a three, this four? Three inch. Okay, three inch cap and everything with some really, really expensive stuff. Uh, and I've got WD-40 in here. Yeah, WD-40. And a nut because I, need, I, my, I needed my sponge up a little high. Yeah, a really expensive sponge there. But again, WD-40, he places the blade through that. As he's sharpening, he is again oiling your blade, which is pretty awesome. Again, just another step uh, in there and everything. Keeps the blade clean. Also prevents uh, flash rust to occur uh, while the blade's just sitting around waiting for you to use it one time. So, yeah, very... Very cool little addition that he's done here. And really just some, uh, you know, ingenuity. <laughs> it helps your blade, puts a little oil on your blade, and it helps the blade to cut down on friction sliding through this block. Mm -hmm. Cause I put a little more tension on here, maybe than most people who own a piece of equipment like this does. But whenever that blade, whenever that rock comes down on across the face of that tooth, I don't want this loose enough that it's going to push that tooth. Mm -hmm. I want that tooth to stay still. So it cuts down the face of that tooth, down the gullet, and up the tip of the tooth. Gotcha. And it'll do the same thing on every one. You don't want one high here, one higher here, a low one over here. Every one of these teeth is going to do a job on that log, and it's going to cut. That's what it does. Now let's, gotcha. let's take a look at this stone here. Again, the man sharpens some blades. A stone starts off like that, and it's down to that. So pretty yeah, impressive. That, that was about to wall out. I, yeah. I, like, yeah, I might get sharp. I really need to put another. This, this rock right here, uh -huh. I need to change this. I need to change this cam because this cam is actually, those blades I sharpened for your dad, those cooch blades, yes. were almost like those 47 blades. Okay. So I need to change this. Okay, we so show that changing we'll show the changing of this. Which is, again, how many cams do you have? Uh, about five. Okay, five different cams. And, and one of your customers from Bogalusa, doesn't he have a one-inch tooth spacing or something? I have a couple of blades here with one-inch tooth spacing. But he also, now I have 60 blades out here that are three-quarter tooth spacing. Three-quarter tooth spacing. So you have to have that three-quarter cam to go on here to do that. Yeah, so, that. and that is something that's really interesting about the the cook system as, as the easy change out of the cams or anything and uh, just the fact that they have a lot of different cams in stock because I know people who are running these systems these uh, cat claw sharpener and setters or anything they are uh, they're sharpening not only for themselves but oftentimes for many people because this is literally this is a sharpener you'd use for a business He doesn't put it on there tight at all. <laughs> Hold that wrench right there, Tom. Got it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Reason I hold back on this and I loosen this is inside this gearbox on this little motor here. It's got them little brass gears in there. Yes. And if I put a lot of torque on them, I'm going to strip those little gears, and I, I have done that. I don't want that to happen again. Yeah, that gearbox is quite expensive. A little over $300. Yeah, exactly. So don't do that. <laughs> Treat your equipment uh, nice, and it will last a long time. So again, the cam that he just took off there is a 7 8 degrees SDC. But it's a lot larger. Yeah, see the difference in them? Uh huh. Huh. Oh, okay, so you're running a 7 8 wood miser. What's SDC? It's probably a. Uh, who knows? SDC. It's SDC. There you go. Now, y'all <laughs> have to ask God what that is because I don't know. <laughs> I just know it works on those 747 blades. Yeah. Or 47. I call them 747. Yeah, whichever. Those are. Who makes those blades? Those were Cook's. Okay. Woodmiser makes one also. Yeah, they make the uh, seven seven degree. They call them. And, and, and I and I don't have to tend to to go with my daddy's philosophy on that. And my daddy would say I would knock a hog in the rear end with one of them. 
Now, if any of you blade manufacturers out there hear that, I'm sorry. That's just how I feel about good blade. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Robert, he's a hoot. <laughs> So yeah, so again, with the Cook system, you're able to run multiple different cams or anything. It's a very um, user-friendly system, but it's just, it's a system that's, you know, they, they know that people are buying this are oftentimes going to be running uh, a sharpening business. And and Mr. Robert's sharpening business, he's, he's done quite well. As you can see, almost 900 blades. Uh, I really need to put another rock on there. You ain't gonna be able to see with that rod. Okay. You want me to show that or you want to pause it? Well, let's see what this one will do. Let's see what this will do. If, this don't, if you can't see with this, we'll put a new rod. Okay. <laughs> and there usually is a cover on that. But Robert doesn't ever have no cover on nothing. No. It's just something to get in the way. That cover is just. I'm sorry, OSHA. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> I'm sorry, OSHA. I don't. Uh... All that stuff, you gotta take it loose every time? Uh-uh, not me. Yeah, he's running a business here. <laughs> and he's a, he's a, he's a one-man show for the most part, so, you know. And whenever you go, another thing here, if you got one of these, and whenever you go from one cam to another, if you're not careful, you'll cut this blade in two. Yes. When that rock comes down, yes. because that. Always set it higher Always and work go. it down into the actual teeth. Always go higher. Just like on the setter, setting it at zero first. Something, something else about this tool that I like. Thomas has a Timber King setter and sharpener. Whenever you turn it on, whenever you turn on Thomas's, it's full out. It goes about that fast, mm -hmm. or faster, doesn't it? It's about yeah, it's about that fast. There is no there's no adjustment. adjustment. You can't speed it up or slow it down. But this one here, the I can granny. make it crawl. <laughs> oh, that was about half wide open whenever I just showed that. Mm -hmm. So again, every single blade. Now, a, a sharpener is a lot easier to use in the setter because, you know, it, it's really if you can figure out which way you need to advance the blade based on how it's cutting. So again, he's going to bring it into the, the face of the tooth. And then he's going to start working the advancement of the blade forward or back in order to get that full sweep of the gullet. That was a heavy grind. <laughs> and now he's going to speed it up. And that will be a very sharp blade. So again, let's see if I can get a good video. And that's a, kind of a heavy cut. That is. Like I said, that, that rock is just, I need to really change it right now. What we just go ahead and show changing that rock. Okay. Well, let's see what this, oh, that's a sharp blue cut though. I don't know, but one thing sharper than that. What's that? <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> the sharpest thing in the world is a fart. <laughs> okay. It will go through your britches and never cut a thread. Wow, that's that's pretty sharp. You say that. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and stop it right here, and then we will show uh, when I restart the video the changing out the stone. So stay tuned. All right, before we show him setting on a new stone, and everything he's going to talk about this one. Now this is one of those for those crazy 747 blades, and everything with the really really high teeth. High sharp teeth, I call them. Yep. Them that ain't worth. <laughs> yeah. I don't like. <laughs> So what he does, he has this, uh, this the, the cam that he uses matches up to the stone he uses because the sensors are so high of a peak, they're ve they've got a very, as you can see, steep angle there on That's the actual right. stone itself. So we're going to show him facing a stone too when he puts this new stone on. 
But yeah, so he keeps that set together for those who bring him blades he does not like. <laughs> I, and I don't like them. I, and I tell the people that break them, I don't like them. <laughs> In fact, there's a few people who have actually switched to some other blades, such as the Meisenheimers. Yeah. Uh, one of our buddies, Mr. Les, he really likes the Meisenheimers now. He switched from the uh, those Woodmiser 7, what do you call them, turbos? Yeah, turbos. turbos. Yeah. Yes. The rock is just wore out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's kind of like me. <laughs> Here's the wall of shame. Now, Thomas, this is a new rock that I got. Out Let's of give her a go. It's a, it's a little different. This is a... Uh, these rocks here are... This is a 40 grit rock okay and this is a 60 okay this is a little finer grit this is coarse i'm not used one of these but we're gonna try it there we go so he's gonna show us facing the stone everything is there a certain side that goes on or it doesn't really matter yeah this side right here <laughs> yeah that's it look at that i feel there you go so again by not having that cover plate on here he can easily uh, get to this and, I, and I'm constantly changing these. Oh, yeah, I'll change from cam to rock I have like I, when I change a cam I have a rock ground to fit that cam And if I got to stop take these three little screws loose every time Never get nothing done <laughs> It's just aggravating. It is it is that and sometimes I get aggravated for you But we understand why they do it, you know safety because there's gonna be some Knucklehead is going to want to stick his finger into the moving Whenever spinning I thing. I put a new rock on there. Always stand to the side. Yes. Because you never want a rock to like fall apart on you. I let it run for a minute. The rock's going to be okay. A lot of people say tap on it a little bit. If it's broken, you can hear it. That's a good rock. Okay. Now he's going to grind this rock. I've got to grind this rock to make sure it's round, all the way around, and then we're gonna put a little bevel So on. which side do you grind? This side. Okay. Never this side. There Always you go. this side. Okay. It'll look like I'm gonna grind on that a little bit. Actually, I'm just making sure the face of it is... Smooth and smooth flat. And, and level it out. Right. He's done this enough. He kind of knows what the shape has to look like. So he'll get it roughed in. And then with the blade that he's using, the blade will actually form the stone to the correct angle it needs to be. This is just doing the initial work so you're not cutting into your blade. Very important that you face your stone. If you don't do this, you will absolutely destroy a blade. Just like kissing your sister, there ain't nothing to it. <laughs> now, if you go kiss your buddy's sister, they may be something to that. Oh, <laughs> uh, quotes of Mr. Robert. Yeah, so as you can see, he just roughly, he didn't do anything to the side. Again, he rounded this edge right here, and then now we're gonna use the actual blade to kind of finish it out. Now, this is the blade we didn't show on film. I set this blade. Now this blade set a lot easier than the other one. And sometimes they're just blades that are set better. I just do that. And the other one I may have hit something. So Robert had to work out a little bit harder. This one here, you know, it set like a dream. I mean, I was able to do it. it couldn't be that hard. <laughs> Let me tell you about these saw blades. I saw lumber for years and years and years. I bought a lot of saw blades. First place, these saw mills, these little band saw saw mills, when they came out, they were called one-man sawmills. They were meant, built for a man to, he got a tree blow down on his property, he buys him a sawmill, he saws it up, he builds him a smokehouse or a hog pen or a chicken house or puts a porch on his house or something like that. That's what they were built for. Maybe build you a little cabin in the woods. Then they got so popular, so people says, I'm gonna buy me one of them, I'm going into production, I'm gonna start cutting lumber for people. Mm -hmm. That is what a lot of people have done. But let me tell you about this blade. This blade here is either 35 or 42 thousandths thick. And some of them's a little different from that, but 40, 35, 42 thousandths. Mm -hmm. It's got teeth on it. 
they hardened from about right here up there. That's where they hardened at. And that blade's only going to do so much work. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like an old man like me. I can get out there and, and mow the front yard, but don't ask me to mow the backyard until I go <laughs> in and watch gun smoke, get me a glass of tea. <laughs> then I might go out there and mow the backyard. But uh, when this blade cuts two or three logs, depending on what you cut, <clears throat> and you, you set that dial on your sawmill and it starts cutting down through there, and you like the speed that it's cutting, after it's cut a log or two, it's going to slow down a little mm -hmm. bit. Then you tweak it a little bit, and it'll speed back up. The next time it slows down a little bit, change that blade. Yes. That blade has already done everything that you can ask of it. Because what's going to happen is you're, going, you're pushing that you're blade, fatiguing and the you're blade. going to start getting wavy yep. longer. You're not going to be happy, and your customers are not going to be happy. That's exactly right. So it's best to keep a sharp blade and a blade that is set properly and also, again, the same thing. If you run a blade, you know, if you try to get five, six hundred or more board foot of a blade, you're putting a lot of stress in that blade. And you're, you're, you're asking a lot of it, and they just won't last that long. That's right. So what my buddy, my buddy, Mr. Jack, does, and a lot of my buddies, you literally, like what Robert was saying, if you're cutting at a speed, you like that speed, if you're flying through that log, if it starts slowing down, time is money. Change that blade out. Take it to someone like Mr. Robert, and he'll sharpen it up for you for a small fee, and then uh, be on your merry way. <laughs> it will, the blade will last you a lot longer too because once you put once you start putting pressure on that blade mm -hmm. it's riding against your your roller guide stop putting heat in the back side. of the blade it, it'll put a ridge on that on your roller guide it'll, it'll it'll reduce the life of them plus it'll reduce the life of your blade and it's just best to go ahead and put a good sharp blade on there and cut good lumber and sometimes i mean for me, the most blades I've gone through today is about four or five. My buddy Jack, he's gone through eight to ten blades a day, depending on what he's cutting. If you get a job where you're cutting one inch dimension oak all day long, well, that's just that's a lot you're asking of your blade to do. And they're really big logs. That's just a lot. So, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. But literally, you know, know your machine, understand what you're asking of your machine to do each day. And if you're pushing it hard and everything, change out your blade more regularly. Uh, that's what we have uh, sharpening services for. And I know there's a lot of guys out there who don't sharpen their blades. Y'all need to start thinking about sharpening your blades because, you know, in the current day and age we live in right now, there is actually beginning, beginning to be a shortage on blade stock material. I know that sounds crazy, but you really need to start saving your blade stock and everything so you're not uh, taking all the supplies out there. Because I know some people who have been cutting for a long time and they have never sharpened a blade. And they just have hundreds of blades piled up. It's just not cost effective and yeah, it's just not cool. <laughs> so again, so he, he's kind of shaped that stone to the blade or to what he believes it needs to be. And by running this machine right now on this blade, we're gonna kind of continue shaping the stone uh, to the actual cut. I said all that, now I wanna tell you this. All you sawyers out there that saw it, you know how you, you know your sawmill. They all cut a little different. What works for you, that's what you need to continue That's exactly doing. right. What works for me may not work for you. Do you know your mill? But just don't ask more of your mill than what it's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and going to that also, like, I know my Timber King 2000 mill. I know the little... You know, little ins and outs about it. When my dad comes down and runs it, he runs it differently than me, and it just makes me kind of cringe. But at the same time, he's got my, or he's got that Cooks MP32 right now. I've run it, but he's run a lot more than me. He knows more about that mill than I do. So, as you run the mill, you, you start to learn what it can and can't do. And just, uh, yeah. <laughs> So he's going to be facing that stone a little bit in the cut itself. He's going nice and slow. He's trying to get that full sweep. Getting close. That sounded pretty good. That sounded like a good sweep. Alright. Alright, so let's get in here and see what this looks like. This is a full sweep. 
So you can see, again, it's sharpening that toothpaste, and it's riding through that gullet there. And then over time, again, your blade will, yeah. will form up that, that stone the way it needs to be just right. And feeling those teeth? Yeah. It will cut. Also, what we can do is we can look at the face. Now, it's going to be kind of hard for me to show this. Let's see if I get the light to shine on it. Anyways, you're going to see a, a solid clean spot there, whereas back here, you're not seeing that, that clean cut, but here you are. So, again, this is cutting really, really sharp. That's a, that's really sharp. I had used that shot. Yeah, I, I'd sharp. be interested to see how that uh, cut. That's sharp. That's really sharp. I mean, that's real sharp. And you can see that entire gullet is sweep, swept out. I can't really get the focus on the gullet that well. There you go. Now you can see the light kind of shining in it on the left side. So, yeah, that's a nice, clean cut all across the face there. So, I hope this video was interesting. I've been wanting to do another video of Mr. Roberts. Pretty cool setup here. We're going to show also, again, his little cool thing right here. He just lubes it up every so often. Helps keep that blade, blade lubricated going around. It helps to stop any surface rust. Yep. That's the thing about the cooks is you can set the uh, speed on this. And there she goes. So, again, if you like what you see, please like, subscribe. Uh, the channel is growing all the time. I really do appreciate it. We are going to be doing another show, hopefully in October time frame. I was already speaking, spoken to the folks at Timber King. That's what we're trying to do. Hopefully we'll have Mr. Robert come up there and he can run my machines because I have the exact same uh, Cook's setter and sharpener as well as I have my Timber King setter and sharpener. So again, like last year, we did a show up in Tennessee in October and we showed the sharpeners and setters and we showed the Timber King 1400 and the 2000. At the show in October, what we are planning to have there will be the Timber King 2000, the Timber King 22. 20, the Cooks MP32, and then we're going to be asking for folks out there as well, hey, if you have a mill, if you're in the Tennessee area near Central Tennessee or West Tennessee, if you'd be interested in coming out, bringing your mill, uh, we'll have a, a, a darn good time out there. So again, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. If you need to get in contact with Mr. Roberts, do you have one of your cards on you? I will put a little screenshot right here. You can contact Mr. Robert oh, over here. <laughs> you can contact. Oh, <laughs> uh, you'll be able to contact him if you want to get your blades sharpened by the one and only master sharpener. <laughs> I don't also, know about that. <laughs> he does also make. Um, blades. Yeah, he, he does sharpen planer blades as well. He sharpens chainsaw blades, and he also makes spoons and spatulas. So Robert's Rustic Relics, you can see his uh, email there and, and cell phone. So I'll put this in the link below. But yeah, if you want to get your blade sharpened, Mr. Robert's always looking for new customers. He doesn't have enough, he tells me. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll see you around. Thanks. Oh, oh, one more quote from Mr. Robert. I was supposed to be retired. I'm a little retarded, but I'm retired too. I've been retired 18, <laughs> almost 19 years in July. Uh -huh. Somebody the other day said, what are you doing? I said, I'm looking for a job. They said, well, ain't you got a job? I said, yeah. I said, but I'm looking for a real job, so I'll have weekends off. <laughs> Retirement is a trick. You never get another day off. Another holiday. It's just work, work, work all the time. As you can see, 900 blades that this man has sharpened since February. That is quite impressive. Again, folks, stay tuned. We'll see you around. Please like, subscribe. Talk to you later. Thanks.